Uh, peace and welcome to this video tutorial called how to not notice you're in an earthquake and I'm gonna explain that in a second it's essentially a lesson in concentration alright so uh, my name is Brian Ogilvie I uh, blog here I am uh, kinda chilling I guess I uh, blog about uh, self-development essentially things like being productive being a little healthier motivating yourself uh, just all those different positive subjects uh, here you see one of the uh, you know one of my more well received recent posts uh, another one I did on reading I realized reading was an important thing that people wanted to build up a habit for that uh, I could help with so I talked about some tips for improving your reading uh, here's some responses get comments this was on yesterday's post um, oh and I have a, a YouTube channel <laughs> obviously uh, Here's the first video I did on concentration where I'm talking about the value of concentration and how to develop it. And also I did a blog post a while back in March where I also built on concentration. So this is part three, technically. Um, oh, and here's the, uh, here's the web link, dothenowledge.com slash transcend. I'll uh, put it in the video description as well. So why I didn't feel the earthquake? Uh, as you know, it's uh, the 24th, August 24th, as of this recording. And uh, yesterday, there was a major earthquake all over the East Coast. I've heard from as low as South Carolina all the way up to New England. And, of course, there was some tremors felt where I am in uh, New York. But I didn't feel anything. And that's because I was riding. In other words, I was so focused, I was so zoned out, I was so in the zone as I was putting together some work that I didn't even realize an earthquake was going on. In fact, not only did I not realize an earthquake was going on, I um, I didn't realize that everyone in the office that I work in um, got up and went outside to see what the commotion was and to see what was going on so I didn't notice an earthquake and I didn't notice like a sharp shift of activity in the office that I work in um, in fact I used to play the drums when I was in a drum corps in uh, Manhattan early on they uh they used to call me space cadet because of my tendency to zone out and focus and uh, I thought about this for a while because when you publish information online one of the uh, recommendations PR specialists and other marketing experts tell you to do is be socially relevant in other words connect what you're doing with things that are actually happening on a day-to-day -day basis and um, I thought about it for a while I said well what can I speak about in regards to the earthquake that I talk about in my general work and that is of course uh, concentration in fact I specifically thought about a book I uh, read a while back called flow the uh, psychology of optimal experience uh, it's by a Hungarian psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi who uh, used to be I think the head of psychology at uh, the University of Chicago and uh, what he talks about is a scientific in-depth explanation of being zoned out or what he calls flow and uh, over the last few years this came out in the early 90s over the last few years it's been one of the basics in uh, self-development having goal activities that put you in a more invigorated happier joyful blissful state of mind as you're doing them so uh, the lesson in concentration is ask yourself do I love what I do so much that I wouldn't even notice an earthquake going on okay um I talk about this in uh my upcoming book. He, uh I talk about Mihai's flow. I wanted to uh read a segment from it cuz it's pretty cool. Uh achievement should never be a forced or strained activity. It should flow like water flows rather than a rigid mechanical process where you're quote unquote trying to make things happen. True success has a natural fluid rhythm to it. Therefore, the goals you set should not only be centered on life purpose, but also in activities that center you into a flowing state, into activities that let you zone out in the joy of doing them. And uh, that's real important because what I noticed is a lot of times people assume that if they're doing something that's meaningful enough, if it's like social work oriented or spiritually oriented, or even if it's something that's going to turn their personal life around, like something financial, they think the significance of the vision or the importance of the purpose itself 
is enough to motivate them to stay concentrated and to stay focused on it long term but that's not the case the reality is you need to have a type of joy or zoning out that occurs as you're doing the work itself and you want to center your goals around that so uh, just continuing if you want to attain what's known as optimal experiences experience while you're working you want to do something you love doing because you're going to be doing a lot of it all right there's a hungarian psychologist called uh mihai cheek sent me high leading professor and former head of the department of psychology at the university of chicago who published the book flow the psychology of optimal experience in the early 90s in it mihai scientifically analyzes what he calls flow that a uh, state of awareness where we become so engaged in what we love doing that we lose awareness itself. In describing flow, Mihai says, concentration is so intense that there's no attention left over to think about anything irrelevant. Self-consciousness disappears and the sense of time becomes distorted. An activity that produces such experiences is so gratifying that people are willing to do it for its own sake with little concern for what they'll get out of it. So he continues, every flow activity had this in common. It provided a sense of discovery, a creative, a creative feeling of transporting the person into a new reality. It pushed the person to higher levels of performance and led to previously undreamed states of consciousness. In short, it transformed the self by making it more complex. And in this growth of the self lies the key to higher level activities. So we all experience this. We all see it in others with sports, games, artistic work, intellectual pursuits that bring us into our own alternate states of awareness. And while the particular activity might be different, like some people they might cook or dance and other people they might, you know, wrestle or write poetry or do chess, the uh, fundamental feeling is essentially the same, like bliss and complete engagement. So you kind of already know what does this for you. You know, you already know what makes you feel empowered, what makes you feel awakened, what makes you feel alive. According to Mihai, however, the uh, key to making flow come about isn't in just knowing what activity to do, but in setting your ambitions correctly. It's knowing how to find the symmetry between what challenges you and what uh, turns you on. So, uh... Let me know what you think. I mean, is this too much focus? Because although it's very, very, very conducive to self-discipline and to concentration, um, you know, maybe you have some, I guess, blocks about it. Maybe not knowing an earthquake is going on is a, a bad thing. It's funny because I have a good friend, a good writer friend. He uh, just published a inspirational recipe book it's like a series of recipes tied in with like motivational poetry at the same time and when I told him what happened about me not realizing the earthquake because I was writing he just laughed because he understood it automatically but you know from my experience I can imagine a lot of people going well you know that's it's no good that's very dangerous and it should make you you know consider other things because that's not healthy uh, so let me know what you think. Share this with some friends. Comment either here or on the blog if you're watching it on the blog. And uh, also check out the blog itself. Uh, do the knowledge com slash transcend. I put a link in the video description too. Um, and that's all. All right. Thanks for checking this out. Peace.